One of the most scariest things that can happen to a website owner is when their website crashes. And this has personally happened to me. I was stupid enough to not update any plugins on my website for an extended period of time. And as a result, my website got hacked. Now I did have backups. I had downloaded backups to my computer. I had backups saved to the cloud. And the worst case scenario, I thought that, hey, I can just log into my website, upload the backup and restore my website and all will be good, right? But the sad reality what happened and it hit me like a brick was that the hackers messed up my website so badly that the backend of the website wouldn't open. I was left with nothing to do. And if I knew then what I knew today, I would be setting up disaster recovery on my website, which I'm gonna demonstrate how you can do today with the help of Duplicator. Now Duplicator is a backup plugin for WordPress, but it can do a lot more. It can do backups, schedule backups, cloud storage. And the more and most important feature which I'm gonna talk about today is disaster recovery, where you can restore your website even without having to the backend or having access to the backend of your website. That is the key feature that I wanna to highlight today with Duplicator. Now you can check out the website here. I'm gonna link it on the screen and also in the description of this video, but Duplicator Pro is also even more powerful. So there's a free version of Duplicator, but there's a pro version as well. I'm gonna be using the pro version to demonstrate the one-click disaster recovery feature. So let me demonstrate how that works. So let me show you how Duplicator one-click restore or one-click disaster recovery works in action on this website. This is an e-commerce website I've set up and you can just see this is the back end and this is the front end of the site. So this is what we'll be messing up or we'll try to mess up and then restore with the help of Duplicator. The first thing we'll do is install the Duplicator plugin because that's what's required for us to get started. By the way, if you want to follow along the tutorial, you'll need the Duplicator Pro version. And for that, you'll have to go to the Duplicator's website and make a purchase. And then you'll get the plugin files in a zip format and also the license key from the back end. I already have that on my computer, so I don't need to follow along. But if you want to use the free version, which does not have disaster recovery, but still can back up your website, you can just follow along with the free version by going into the plugin section. So I'll go to the plugin section and I'll go to the add a new plugin section here. And inside here, I'll go to the upload plugin option because I'm going to be uploading the zip file and I already have the zip file. So I'll drag it from my computer here and let's install it now. So the plugin is now installed. Let's also activate it. So the plugin is now installed on the site. That means Duplicator Pro is installed, but we need to activate the plugin with our license key. So I'll just go and click here, which the link says activate your license. And what I'll be doing is just adding my license key here. So I'll blur the license key out and I'll click the activate button. And now you can see the license key is now activated. That means Duplicator Pro has been completely installed. Now to get started, we need to have a backup in place first so that we can use Duplicator feature to actually set up disaster recovery. Now, just to clarify, you can have manual backups or create backups manually. You can have scheduled backups. That means backups that run on a scheduled basis. And you can save those backups either on your computer, on your local server, or put them up in the cloud. So example, a Google Drive folder, a Microsoft OneDrive folder, or any other folder. And any of these backups that are available in the cloud, that means either on your local server or in the cloud, can be used as a disaster recovery backup service or as disaster recovery backup. Let me show you how it works. So to use backups, we'll go into the Duplicator Pro settings here on the bottom of the screen, and you can see you have backups here. So backups are basically backups. This is where you'll find all the different backups. So you can see there's one backup already created on my site, which I created before I started recording this video. We can use this very same backup, or what I'll do is I'll delete this and start from scratch. So I'll go here and I'm gonna clear, uh, delete this and I'll just delete this backup so I can show you the process from scratch. So the backup is uh, deleted. Now this is what you'll see when you start. Uh, no backups or just completely starting from scratch. We'll click the add new button here and this will start the process of creating a new backup. Now there'll be a lot of different settings that you see here, backup format, template, storage, but as a beginner or even if let's say you just wanna be sure everything has been backed up, you don't need to customize anything. Just make sure that this is not changed because this is where the uh, exact date and time of the backup is being stored. So you can rest assured that it's easy way to identify what the backup is happening or when the backup was made so that you can identify late at a later date uh, using this uh, or using this data. So I'll not touch any of the settings because as a beginner, you don't need to touch any of the settings. I'll just click the next button. And what Duplicator will do is just run a site test so that everything, I mean, all the settings are in place for the backup to be done. And you can see all of the settings have passed or all the tests have passed and you're seeing a green rating here. And now you can just click here and create the backup. So I'll click create backup and the backup will start creating now. It takes less than a minute, two minutes, depending on the site of the website or size of the website, the size of the content of the website. So you can see here it's starting and what I'll do is wait for it to finish and I'll uh, resume the video then. 
So the backup is now complete and you can see the name of the backup file. And there's some other options on the screen that I'll want to explain to you so that you can understand the usefulness of all these features. So the first option here is a restore. So if you want to restore your website to this backup, you can just click the restore button. Of course, this means you need to have access to the backend. And this is not a disaster recovery feature. I'm gonna talk about it in a second. And you can also download this backup and save it on your computer. And a few other things here, which uh, tells us some, some things about the backup itself. So if I zoom in the screen here, I'll hover over this and I'll zoom in. So you can see, oops, uh, this is a manual backup. So the hand icon actually means that this is a manual backup. That means we created this manually. Just to clarify, we can create backups by going into backups here, which I did, but you can also schedule backups. So you can create multiple schedules. So let's say once a week, twice a week, and you can have multiple schedules. So you can say, hey, one full backup every uh, two weeks, and then every day, a small incremental backup is being made. So you can combine all these settings. So all the backups that your website makes, whether it's manual or scheduled, they'll show up here. And the hand sign means that this was a manual backup. And then the second icon means that the backup is in local storage. That means it stays uh, stored on your server. It's not on a Google Drive or any other let's say, cloud backup service. And the third option is the most important. The blue house icon means that this backup is available for disaster recovery. So I'm zooming on the screen so you can hopefully see it clearly that this backup is available for disaster recovery. Now, what we can do to create this backup or transform this backup into a disaster recovery backup is just click on it. Yep, that's all we have to do. So I'll just go here, hover over this, and I'll click on it. And we'll see a couple of settings open up here. You can see disaster recovery is available for this backup because all this information you can say, hey, set disaster recovery. So once we do this, this backup will be transformed into disaster recovery. And you can use this backup regularly as well. You can see it, the regular backup option is also available, but you can also uh, use this for disaster recovery. Now, how does disaster recovery work? So if I close this, let's say, you come to the site and you see all these options here. And you say, hey, how am I supposed to use this backup for disaster recovery? Well, the option is pretty simple to use. All you have to do is click the green icon once again. And what Duplicator will create is a unique link for you, a unique URL for you, which you can see here. So if I click the copy link button, there's a unique link that is created for my website. So if I bring over my notepad here, and you can see, I'll place my notepad here. And if I paste the thing that I just copied from the website, the backend here, it'll show the entire link. Now it's a very long link and it includes the domain name of your website. So right now you see, this is the domain name of my website. This is a temporary domain from my website. So you will see your website domain here and it has a long URL. Now, what do you need to do with this URL? First of all, you need to save it in a secure location because this link is what will allow you to restore your website without having access to your backend. So what I'll do is I'll place this on the side and now, if you go back here, we can still do the rest of the same things with this backup. We can just restore this, download this, and all that. So what I'm going to do is now try to wreck up my website. I'll try to destroy the website uh, enough that I cannot access the back end of the site. So right now, you can see here, this is the front end, which is a shop, and it also also a home page here. So if I go to the home page, I can show that to you also. This is the home page of the site. So you can see it's a good looking site. And this is the backend. I can still access the backend. So what I'll try and do is now is I'll go into uh, the settings and try to wreck the site up and then come back with the video. And then we'll try to um, restore the website using disaster recovery. So I'll come back in a second and I'll resume the video. All right. So I was successful in wrecking the website and you can see this is the front end. It's completely wrecked. There's been a critical error. I just deleted some system files. And now if I even try to open the uh, admin area, I'll just place the URL on the screen. If I try to type in the admin URL here, oops, I think I mistyped it. Let me type again. And you can see it also throws an error. Now we don't have the access to the front end or the back end. We are completely wrecked. So this is where disaster recovery comes into play and saves our butts basically. So if we go here, this was the URL that we saved for disaster recovery. How do we use this URL? We just open the URL. So if I double click this, you'll see a new window or new tab will open, and this will initiate the disaster recovery without having backend or access to the backend to the restore point that we just created. So it was just done a few minutes ago. So the website should go back to normal. And you can see some options here. And all you have to do is click this checkbox where you have say, hey, I have read all terms and conditions or accept the conditions. I'll click restore. There should be one more dialog box here. We'll say, hey, this is what will happen. This will be changed. How many tables will be overwritten, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then all you do is just click OK and wait. 
and uh, duplicator will get into action just going to completely uh, restore a uh, website and it'll take a few minutes maybe so i'll just wait for it to finish and it'll resume the video so the restore process is now complete and you can see recovery process is done now the last step that remains is just for us to log in to the admin area so if i click this we should be able to log in using our credentials now just to clarify if let's say uh, you changed your passwords before or after you created the disaster recovery or even the backup then you'll need to use the passwords that were done or using or you were using before the backup was done or you can just reset your password because the restoration process is complete hopefully the email address on uh, your website is correct so you can restore it but the idea is that let's say if your website was hacked and a hacker uh, changed the credentials you can still use the old credentials if you didn't change them so what i'll do is just click the admin login button here and i have my credentials on my notepad file here so i'll just paste them here quickly and let me just also copy and paste the password i'll log in and first thing that's good sign of hope is that we can see the login option uh, directly after the restore process so that's the first great sign we're also hopefully we'll be, log we'll be logging in a few seconds and now you can see the site has been successfully restored and if i show you the front end here let's visit the site and you can see the site works perfectly after just critical error here and if you go to the shop section the product section that should also work perfectly fine and that's how duplicator pro saves everyone and you can save your website with the help of disaster recovery options so now hopefully you understand how critical this feature is in duplicator pro one click disaster recovery anything happens to your website you can always restore it now duplicator pro is packed with features and even the free version has a lot of features and if you want to learn about all the features and i say a few different essential features that you can utilize in duplicator i would recommend to watch this video right here and you can always subscribe to our channel for more educational wordpress content you're watching you've watched from wbnr i'll catch you in the next video take care